Back in the options menu, a little further down is dynamic transport. I'll turn off quick punch and activate dynamic transport. So now I get a second line in my timeline and I get a little blue triangle. Let's look at how we can use this. Let's say that we want to record something at bar 10 and we want to reference something that happened at bar six. You can probably relate to this experience. You're working on a song and the singer is starting to do the second chorus and they're not doing something that they did in the first one, but you want them to do it like they did in the first one. So we want to reference something at bar six and then immediately jump to where we want to record them at bar 10. So I'm going to move the little blue arrow to there. The space bar will take me to bar six. But if I record, no track is record enabled. That's indeed true. Let me go back to here. And if I record with the F12 key, it's going to count off a bar into six and then punch in at 10. That's if I use the space bar. If I use the bracket keys, the right bracket will take me actually to 10. The left bracket takes me to this little edit point, so I can grab those guys and move them. The left bracket would then take me to nine. The space bar takes me to six. And the right bracket takes me to 10. Using quick punch, I can have the performer listen to something at six and then immediately jump to nine and punch in at 10 and punch out again. Pretty slick, huh? It's a very handy way to reference something earlier in the recording and then jump right to where you want to print it later in the recording. So that's dynamic transport.